How's it going guys? Uh, today I'm going to build a model. Um, I've built some of these in the past. They're pretty fun, a little pricey, kind of hard to find sometimes, but they are actually pretty good. Uh, Minimum Factory 120 plastic figures and it's the cases are always cool. It's always really nicely packaged and uh, it's, they're pretty simple, straightforward. Uh, it, they just require a lot of painting. Uh, pretty much how it looks outside of the box and how you want it to look with a little bit of Photoshop, I'm sure, but we can we can uh, work on this to make it look as close as possible. And uh, this is from Record of the Lotus, Lotus War that uh, my brother's obsessed with. You know, I've only watched it once when I was a kid, so I, it's been a while. I don't remember, to be honest, because it's been that long. Uh, cool, cool character, cool design, and uh, let's get to it. First thing I guess about these models is um, Minimum Factory, they make uh, pretty nicely detailed uh, scale figures. They also make these giant Gerwalks and giant Valkyries from Macross, and they're not that great, but they're little, they, well, they're, they're good, they're just not, they're not worth the money, to be honest. But uh, these are really nice if you can get them when they're printed first, because they kind of go up in value once they're sold out everywhere. Like, she was sold out for a bit. Uh, over the summer, but she got reissued for her normal price and thank God because she was going up pretty high and Really nicely molded. So let's uh, open her up real quick Now we're going through each runner. Uh, they're really nicely detailed these uh, little parts and uh, so far, it's pretty straightforward. It's a, not that many parts. Uh, there's gonna be a little seam lines from what I can tell. Uh, but it looks like they have it, so you're not gonna beat yourself up too much over it. Um, so I'm just gonna, uh, uh, let's, get a, let's get a little closer. Instruction manual is pretty pretty simple, pretty basic. Uh, I built Min May, uh, the Do You Remember Love version in the past, and she was pretty fun to, fun, fun to paint. She's actually a little more easier looking than her because it looks like you have to paint all this gold detail that she has on her armor. That's going to be some hand, some free-handed stuff right there. Uh, but uh, she'll, the good thing about these little guys is they come with water slide eyes, and it looks like they come with a water slide for her necklace. That I am probably is that her necklace? I think. Oh, that's her headpiece. Her headpiece for her that I'm probably going to have to use because just by looking at this. Uh, they definitely used the uh, water slide for the eyes and the uh, and the head, so I'm not going to beat myself up trying to do this that way. And it looks like it looks like the seam lines I was I saw earlier are actually hidden. They want you're going to hide her one seam arm seam on the arm behind her uh, dress, and the other one was molded in one piece. The cape looks like it's molded in two pieces. So let's uh, let's snap her up real quick and see how it looks. So I'm currently assembling, just getting a good uh, idea of what I'm getting myself into with this. Uh, it's pretty straightforward, pretty easy to take apart, pretty easy to uh, mask up and uh, paint. All these parts come right off, it's pretty simple. Uh, you got a few seams that I saw, like on the gauntlets, but you won't even notice it, because uh, most of her, most of, most of these seams <clears throat> are blocked off by the cape. And when the cape is on, you're not even going to see anything. You're gonna see the detail, like uh, you're, gonna barely, you're, barely, you're gonna see the detail, but you won't see all the seam lines they have uh, on her, uh, especially on the dress. The dress there's one going up and down, but it's gonna be covered up by the cape, and, the, and she has this pretty long sword right here that's gonna be uh, pretty much blocking all that, along with her belts and all of her accessories. Uh, so for so honestly, the two that I'm gonna have to deal with right now is on the cape because uh, that's just one big guy in the back, as you can see. That's easy to do, so what I'm gonna do is hit it with some, uh, probably hit it with some glue real quick, and uh, let that go. That's probably gonna be another layer of putty on that. And she has one actually on her hair, that, uh, that's pretty, 
It's, it's not too bad. It, it, she goes together so nicely. You got one, you got one right on the hair. You can't see it too well in the video, but it's there. Oh, that's, that's something I can take care of. Um, she just really, this is, these are just really nicely made. The, the figures themselves are really nice, but when they made those big, uh, I don't know, they're big, the robot models, they're a little, they're a little, uh, they're, they need some work, but the figures are pretty good. It kind of makes me want to find uh, one of the boat girls, because those look fun to build. But this looks pretty good. But yeah, so now uh, what I'm going to do now is uh, hit it with some glue, give it a shot. Actually, gonna go in with some cement deluxe because that's a big uh, hole to fill. So maybe if I apply a good amount, not too much. Not too much, but I'm not ruining anything. I'm not melting any of the plas plastic. Just what I want to connect. And I squeeze, get fill up all that crack. That's it. Let that dry. I'll hit it with some sandpaper in a few hours. So I got this piece right here. Okay, let's hit that with a little bit of cement deluxe. Squeeze this on. Squeeze it out so you can see all that glue pushing out of it. That's what you want. You want a nice full contact. If you look quick, you see with the light, you can see the glue coming out and that's what you want. That's why you know you have uh, even coverage. And when, when it comes to removing the seams, it's going to be a lot easier when you start sanding. When you sand, uh, hopefully you don't use as much putty. This looks good. Really nicely uh, sculpted, really nicely made. It's a nice looking cape. I don't know why they chose this uh, character. I guess she's really popular. The rest of her, I'm not going to worry about any of the seam lines like on the side or anything because uh, I could get I could get away with the, uh, with the cape cover and all that. That's no problem. She's going to need a lot of hand painting for this detail. I'm sure there's some uh, elitists out there that want me to mask that, but come on, that's not happening. So she has a uh, blue breastplate and the back of the be uh, breastplate is uh, gonna get blue right here. So I'm gonna, that I'm gonna have to uh, mask and paint. That's gonna be easy though. The green looks like it's gonna be a lot of fun to paint. I got some new, nice new greens I wanna try out. I got some nice new colors in general that I wanna try out. So let's uh, get some sanding done. Now I'm going to get going, I'm going to prime her up, I'm going to hit it with some thousand, uh, some Surfer 1000 and then I'm going to check for imperfections and then uh, get her and start sanding in. Here's how she looks right after I hit her with two light coats of primer. Uh, I didn't really kick in on anything, I just want to do light, light coats so I can see any imperfections and as you can tell the, the, the cape is where the big uh, big seam line is right there. My glue didn't do shit so I'm going to go through and uh, hit it with some putty. On the back it's pretty good, but I'm still gonna go in there with some sandpaper and clean everything up. Everything's gonna get lightly uh, sanded down, and some parts are gonna get uh, hit with uh, putty. I was like, the the dress came out pretty nice, so that's looking good. But everything is gonna get hit one more time with uh, light sandpaper, and then I'm gonna do the final sanding with, uh, I mean the final primer with 1200 surfacer. So everything was turning out pretty good with that D, but uh, pretty much she's done for, she's ready to get painted. I made her skin and her hair with a yellow base for now from finishers. And um, now I'm gonna knock out this skin. I'll show you guys how to paint the skin. And I painted her hair with a lemon yellow. I'll show you guys that in a second. Now I'm gonna go ahead and paint her hair. Uh, I always start with the white base when I'm painting yellows because when you paint yellow on gray uh, surface, it turns out green. It looks like it doesn't look too well. So that's the first coat. Now I'm going in with a little bit of highlights. I just added a little more white to the yellow base and uh, very carefully just went easier and easier. And this is how it came out after two more coats and uh, it came out pretty nice. This is a nice, vibrant uh, yellow. It looked, looks a lot better in person. I wanted her colors to pop out more, and this is uh, exactly what I wanted. 
I'm gonna go ahead and paint all of her armor bits now, her breastplate and shoulder and uh, sheath for her sword. Um, right now, from what I'm looking at, it looks like it has a little bit of a green tone to it. You can't really pick pick it up too much on the camera, but in person it looks like a little bit, just a little bit. So what I'm probably gonna do is I'm gonna hit it with some uh, with some AP blue by finishers and hit it again with a little bit of greenish blue metallic colors from finishers. Using finishers paint is really nice. Uh, the pigments are very strong. It's very durable, very easy spraying and paint. Never had problems with it. Um, that metallic blue is really nice and the coverage is excellent. Uh, as you see here, I'm just painting the breastplate right now. And with my, when it comes to painting uh, with the, this metallic, I did one light coat and I went in with a wet coat and it's super smooth and really nice. And now I'm painting the back of her before, and this is before I mask her up. Now you see how the paint came out. Uh, the photo does the justice. Uh, you can see the nice, nice flakes in it. Not too big, very subtle, very, very smooth. Nice paint. Uh, I didn't put any compound to it. That's just how it comes out. If you look close, here's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna hit it with the greenish blue. And you're gonna see. I won't, I'm not gonna cover the entire piece, just the, the higher spots. And you're gonna see a little bit of difference. That's it. See? Now you can see green and dark blue. I'm just gonna repeat it for all the middle parts of the sword. I think there's a nice blend. I love how the back came out, it looks so good. It's a shame it's being covered by the uh, cape, but it is what it is. I'm just gonna slap a uh, thing of surface of Evo on it. Probably won't do any depth with, with her, but she's so small. Here's how she looks like, uh, just a Evo surfers are on it. It looks pretty good, but in person it looks kind of flat. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start mixing my paints up together. Uh, I'm going to use some uh, Gaia, Gaia Flesh and Gaia White. Mix it up. I'll do a video on uh, flesh painting eventually. This is after the second coat with uh, some mixed paints. I started adding some red to the fleshes and I aimed for some larger areas and for her like elbows, knees, uh, around, the, around the chin and uh, you kind of want to go in on an angle and this is the final coat after I added a little more red to it and uh, she came out really nice, I did like the skin, I did skin, the Gaia mix, it was really really good. Next I'm going to paint the back of the cape. Uh, it's very nice, very, very nicely made. Uh, the first layer, it's going to be three layers I'm going to use. The first layer is going to be pure blue by finishers, so I'm going to apply a nice even coat all the way around and then I'll work from there. When painting, you always want to start off with the light layer. You don't want to cake it on because then you're just going to have build up and pooling and it's going to look like shit. There's no rush when it comes to paint the models, because if you do, it's going to show. So, 
what I like to start, there's a, there's a percentage I'll, I'll like using when it comes to uh, coverage. Start off with 30%, then 80%, then finally 100%. And when it comes to painting with lacquer paint, it, they, it dries very fast, so don't kill yourself over it. So even now, this looks pretty nicely, but trust me, it's going to look a whole lot nicer when I'm done. After loading the, the uh, pure blue dry, I'm going to go over with some Superfine Cobalt 5 finishers. So you're going to see you're going to see the, the depth uh, stand out, and you're going to see some good shit. Yeah, I don't want to go into the dark, the darker parts of the cape. I kind of want to leave them as dark as possible. So I'm just going on the these high uh, raised areas. And make sure you have good control with your airbrush because you don't want this to uh, slip into those dark areas. Because then it kind of just look a little funny. And for this, I'm probably just going to do two uh, light coats. I'm not going to go for full coverage or anything. I'm going to do a little more towards the bottom and to the corners of the caves. Just like that. See? See how, this, how uh, it stays dark with all the flaps, but outside it's pretty bright. The final uh, highlight I'm going to use, you're going to see a real difference when it comes to all this blending. And look at that. Beautiful. Now I applied the final highlights of sky blue on the raised edges, and then after that, what I do is I lightly mist the entire piece with sky blue, so the blend uh, acts a little more, uh, you know, evenly, a little more organic looking than just looking like, oh, that part is painted differently. So that's how, that's how the cape turned out. I'm very satisfied with it. This is the final airbrushed cape uh, before I put the top coat on. Uh, it came out really nicely. Now I'm going ahead and painting the dress. Uh, the green was really strong and it made up any of the blue overspray. I had the back uh, masked off. And um, all I did was do two light coats and was able to cover it completely. Sorry, didn't I record it properly where you guys can actually see what I'm doing when I'm angling down and just picking up the areas where I wanted. Next time. Here I'm using uh, G Colors Pirate Brown paint. It's really nice, and this is, that's exactly what I wanted with the color of the boots. So a nice animation, looking brown, very, very cool. And that was the color of the boot on the right that I had originally, and I really did not like it. But I'm telling you, that pirate brown, that is one hell, hell of a color. I honestly don't know why I didn't record this. Uh, this was pretty straightforward. Uh, masking the blue on the back was pretty easy, and you kind of just be careful at it. Uh, with these colors, I mixed a lot of brown, and then I kept highlighting it with a little bit of orange and a little more orange. And it kind of looks like a caramel, but uh, I was just uh, going off for a uh, design on the... Uh, box and it looks really really nice and see how I'm just doing the final highlights if you look I think I mixed the orange yellowish brownish color and just going on the highest parts and uh, free hey look at that I'm not even using masking and look how cool it came out man that's a really nice and that's after I hit it with some GX114 uh, with this step I'm going in and I'm uh, gloss coating every part that needs to be hand painted uh, with just Mr. Happy Gloss Coat. And with this, now I'm going in with the hand painting. I use a lot of Citadel when I hand paint uh, because I just have a ton of it and it helps a lot when it comes to choosing the right color. Uh, I really like how my head is blocking what I'm doing for most of this recording and uh, I'm sorry about that. And I like painting on a gloss on a glossy surface because it's easier for cleanup and our acrylic paint kind of it comes off pretty uh pretty easily so now i'm using a dark brown i don't know what the hell it's called some citadel color dryer brown or something as a base coat for her belts her bands and i'm gonna go ahead and paint her gauntlets and her boots with all that 
She has these little, little bands that were kind of a pain, but I was able to get it. And with here, I'll show you what I'm doing. Same thing with the boots. This is some uh, dramatic music for something that's not that fun to watch. And look how great I can uh, center my uh, my piece that I'm painting in the video. Look at my hair. Isn't that great? Can't believe it. Now I'm going ahead and adding a uh, wash to all the parts I just painted with the dark brown. I think I used. I think that's no oil. I'm not too familiar. I'm not too enough. I don't remember. It's been a while since I recorded this video, and now I'm narrating it about three months later. I think it's either no oil or it's Agrath's Earthshade. Now what I'm doing is I'm actually going in with the original base color when uh, picking up the highlighted areas. And uh, this way the paint can have more depth. And, it, and you can tell that only the highlighted areas are getting uh, repainted. I think I added a little more of the lighter brown to the mix. It's a little tedious, but you get used to it. What I'm doing next is just adding a little bit of the green wash to uh, the dress for the for the, all the crevices to add a little more depth to it and it came out really nicely. Now I'm doing the same thing with the blue. I'm at another blue cerulean. I don't know what the hell. The blue wash that they have, Citadel, to the cape and all of the cape's crevices. Now I'm going to be using these uh, Volks' chalk pastels. Uh, these are meant for their dolls, and all you got but you can use them for honestly models and they it's a nice natural look for uh, if you want to add some blush to the faces or something all you do is scrape some off the side with a knife and then go a little bit in, and then kind of just do like a dry brush see what I did around the shoulders around the ears face and uh, the knuckles and um, it, it, it does add it adds a nice nice pop to her skin repeating the same step but with the hair that uh but that was just a normal chalk yellow pastel that i had and uh it's added to the old same thing add more detail man keep going I'm sure some people are going to give me uh, shit for using motorcycle decals, but honestly, I don't care. It's an easy way out. And the, uh, and the eyes that they come with, they give you so many in case you screw up. Just do it. Use it, and it looks great. They look great. So I just, uh, repositioning and using the Q-tip to clean up any extra water and get repositioning. Then after I was satisfied, I added uh, Mr. Softener and uh, to melt all the decals on, and it looks natural. Just came out good. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how I uh, hand paint all this gold detailing. I use the Citadel system for this, very straightforward, and the gold stick work together really well, and the coverage is really good on it. I start with their Retribution armor for a base coat, and uh, I apply two light coats very easily, very, very carefully on all the gold bits. Thank you. 
Now I add, uh, add grass red shade to all, my, all the gold that I painted. Uh, it adds a, acts as a wash, adds a lot of depth to it, gets into all those crevices, and that's what you want. And it acts natural, and it's great. That's how I recommend it. I didn't record what I did after the wash uh, dried up. I went, get, went ahead and added some more highlights to the gold with the other gold they have from their line. Just follow their system and they'll have some nice gold by hand painting results. Now I have the now I'm working on the sword. I have it masked off, and then I just airbrushed it with uh, I think Star Bright Silver from Gaia, not, if I'm not mistaken, which is a really nice uh, gold to airbrush. And uh, after that, I'm going to start with all the detailing on the sword. Now what I want to do is paint the red gem that's on the hilt of the sword right there. It's very tiny and it's a few little steps and it's really easy. I started with uh, sil Tamiya Silver, pretty easy, Just right out of the bottle, very careful. I think I used a triple zero brush as well to get the detail on. So you want, you want a nice silver base for what I'm going to show. And that's how it came out. Now I used it, uh, Citadel's uh, gemstone colors, and what you do is kind of glob it on, but very, like, but you have to be in control of it so you don't get doesn't get all over the place, and it acts as a real natural gem. After it dries, that's how it'll turn out, and it looks pretty cool. And then now you add the R coat over the gem to give it a nice seal and to add more shine to it. All done. It's looking pretty good. Say so myself. Uh, the, the final assembly wasn't too bad. Just follow the directions because uh, it's like a puzzle piece putting her together. But uh, once you do that, and I, I used a, and I used uh, some Loctite glue on a you know on a toothpick, so nothing would smear. And she's pretty sturdy. So I'm really satisfied with how she came out. Uh, the only problem right now is now, now I'm gonna do a diorama. I'm going to try to figure something else out. I'm going to put it on the shelf for about a week or two, work on some other projects, and come back and uh, knock out a diorama. But I am very satisfied with her. She came out good. Now I'm going to work on the base. Uh, what I do first is I just sand uh, the edges smooth because that's where the tabs were when I cut them out and uh, I need a nice smooth base for the paint job I plan on doing with it so easily this you know god hand sponges can't go wrong with that smooth that out and here I hit it with some uh, 1200 uh, surfacer uh, easy peasy Now I'm going to hit it with some Mr. Hobby uh, Mahogany. Uh, I do a quick coat first and then I go over with, with a wet coat. A nice uh, smooth finish. Now I have these really cool wood stencils that help a lot to get a wood finish. Uh, I know I could have paint, painted a uh, wooden base but I kind of want to do my own thing. And uh, I'm using wood brown now from Mr. Hobby to give me uh, my effect. And uh, these are really cool stencils, man. I recommend it. This is after I finish completed. Uh, I have a little bit of overspray from overlapping the parts. I'm not too worried about it. It kind of blends in. Uh, now what I'm going to do is hit it with a uh, seal. Now this is with the GX114 uh, smooth finish, give me that ultra smooth finish that I love. I'm going to go ahead and start painting the dirt. I'm using the Citadel texture that uh, helps create earth. Uh, it's good for cracked earth, but if you use light layers like I'm doing, you'll get a nice, uh, subtle, good foundation if you just want like uh, natural earth uh, base. 
and then you just go on like that and let it dry for about like an hour and then now this is how it looked after it's finished it looks natural and then i have these i think these are from army painter these are good rocks you can just break apart with your hand to i just want to add some uh, stones to the base now i'm going ahead and i'm uh, act adding loctite glue to uh seal them in so they won't come off easy peasy just a little bit of rock base to add something going on to that tiny base i was able to work with I'm honestly just spreading uh, on uh, Elmer's glue right now uh, for a uh, to hold the grass I'm about to pour on. Just basic grass mix with a little bit of dirt I put in there from other effects, just for a more uh, realism look. Uh, but it helps a lot to get that anime look too. You just pat in the extra and keep going in. Repeat the process a few times for the mist areas. Pretty simple. These are some just bullshit uh, trees for dioramas that I got at Michael's for like $3. I just go ahead and cut off some uh, parts uh, that will be good for little flowers. I'm gonna, I am plan on putting them around to our feet. And uh, first I set them where I have an idea where I kind of want them and then I just go in with more luck, take glue and seal them in. Now I'm just unmasking the base to take a look at how it came out. Give it a quick cue tap to get off any more excess uh, grass. And uh, the base came out really, really nice. I'm very happy with it. Alright, I can finally finish this mo call this model complete after uh, several months off from painting the base. I just had it sitting on the shelf. And the uh, base is all done. Came out pretty cool. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be people out there going to say, Oh, it looks so basic. But honestly, I don't really care because uh, I wanted it to look more cartoony. And with the details, this, uh, with all the coloring I did on d -Lit, and with this base, it looked kind of cool. The colors, uh, everything, I wanted everything to be vibrant. So let's assemble her. I'm wearing gloves because I trust myself, but my hands are rough, man. So let's put her on. She's like a snug fit too, which is a kind of a bitch. I don't want to ruin nothing. All right, I got her on. Why is this so tough? Easy, gentle. Voila! There it is. So I totally forgot one thing. Uh, this, the rocks are a little too clean. So I'm just gonna add a little uh, agraft's earth shape to them. Add a, just a little bit of a wash. Add some stains. There we go. This will look good when it's all dry.
So yeah, it's uh, over. Shows a fun model. Pretty easy. I liked it a lot. Uh, and uh, sorry about the video. <laughs> so uh, I recorded it months ago and I finally got around to finishing it now. Uh, and I was editing the video and seeing how my footage came out. And honestly, I'm, I'm fucking terrible at this stuff. Uh, I would love to keep doing videos, but every time I record stuff and I put it together, I'm like, why the fuck are my hands in the way? Why is this in the way? Why is this in the way? But it is what it is. I'll keep making videos, whatever. I don't know. I don't know. Because I, uh, I like, uh, I just kind of want to show people how to... I want to show people how to paint and make them. They're not hard. Uh, how many people are building other models? You want to get out of it, go build something else. This, these, are, uh, these are cool little models to work on. They're so much fun. I actually just got another one. Isn't that great? Yamada girl. And, and she has a lot of parts, so maybe uh, I'll get around to this eventually. But, uh, yeah, you know, comment, like, subscribe, see what's up, and, uh, I'll see you at the next video, uh, which will be posted maybe in two years. Bye!